Hi, Carolyn Forster. Here's what happened on Carolyn Talks. Um, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Um, we really appreciate it. And my question is for Asia. And when I first read this thread, I read it live as you were like typing it out. I was on the bus on the way home and it was like one of the most surreal experiences I've ever had because literally everyone had their phone out and was watching it. <laughs> And one of the things about it is that that you have a very comical way of speaking and getting your thoughts out. But one thing I think the film did is show like the trauma that you would have experienced and like how dangerous and precarious of a situation you were in as a, as a young woman, but also as a young black woman. Could you speak a bit about your experience, about how about how people have received your story and how you've been able to like, I guess you could say process everything that had that happened then and is happening now. <laughs> with the film and then everyone getting to see what exactly how it happened. For starters, me writing, especially like my social media presence, me on Twitter, that is how I process, if that makes sense, that's how I process my trauma. I feel like once I write it down and read it and relive it, then I can finally get over it. So um, that's really what I was doing on Twitter in the first place. I wasn't like looking to necessarily tell a story and the humor part of it that's just me. Like I'm, I'm, you know, I heal through humor and I feel like that's how I find other people who relate to me because we all want to laugh. Like everyone's going to relate to something that makes them laugh regardless of how traumatic it is, you know? So um, I thought that I painted a clear picture of how traumatic the experience was when I told it on Twitter, but to see it with your own two eyes, like to see it played out, it does just add the the cherry on top, I feel like. Um, and to watch it slowly progress, like to reach to the climax of just how, you know, shitty things went. I think that seeing it um, in film helped. It helps other people. Cause I, like I said, I already processed it. I already, I was processing it when I wrote it. So um, yeah, I think, I think it needed that it needed a, a clear, you know, picture. Um, and so I think that's what the film did. It helps really explain or really show just how traumatic that that experience really was. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Did I answer the question? <laughs> Great job. No, you did. Thank you so much for sharing it because I think it, it kind of speaks a lot to like situations that women get into and people don't really think until they yeah. see it. So I really appreciate you sharing the story then and, and now. My second question now is for both Janiska and Taylor, and it has to do with the creative process of the film, because I think the choices that you both made as director and as actress are super interesting. For Janiska, I wanted to ask you about the sound design of this film. I noticed you don't have a lot of, there's no music, really. You use sounds like the ball bouncing when they turn up at the hotel. And then there's like the phone ringing or the, the typing, the sound of the typing, and that builds a lot of tension without it actually being noticeable. So could you just tell us a bit about those kind of choices? And for Taylor, the your body language speaks so much in this film and your eyes are so expressive and the way you just let everyone know what's running through your head without saying a word, like you feel the trepidation and the angst and the anxiety and also the anger. So could you just speak a bit about your creative process and pulling that out of yourself? and giving voice and I guess and imagery to, to what Zola was experiencing in those moments as well. Taylor, you go first. Oh, I mean, so much of my dialogue is in my head. And, you know, Zola's tweets, that's the narrator. So, um, but I, I think, I think that I learned in this process how to, I mean, I just, it's, it, the role called for me to be an engaged listener and observer because it's like survival and it's also like what is going on here. And um, I mean, with Janix's help and vision and just trying to find nuance and subtlety and not have, you know, gestures that weren't necessary and stillness and the Black woman collective sigh, which is just like, you know, like we say so much, like it's just, it's in us, you know, like we, we are, I don't know, we're, we're, we are feelers. We are, you know, we're, we're so connected to spirit, I think. So I just feel like it just was naturally, I just was like reacting to the given circumstances and, the, it, and its absurdity. And there's not really much to say, like, I'm gonna 
excuse myself and try to get the hell out of here. And so what is the most, I, I to be like every line was really about just being really honest, just telling the truth every step, every, yeah, every moment. I think a lot of the silence also is a defense mechanism. Yeah. A way to protect yourself. You know, it's like the, the end goal is to get out of here. And so. I'm not going to lend myself too much. I'm not gonna, <laughs> we ain't gonna... I don't need to add a quip here. Cause like, I'm just trying to wrap it up. Like yeah, I'm looking at the time. time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the moment. This is the moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the question you asked about, it's funny that you feel there's, there are 44 songs or 46 songs in the movie actually our composer made 46 pieces but i think it's kind of amazing that you don't exactly feel it because that means it's embedded right i think it's like so much in it's in the wallpapers so to speak uh the sound design which i also feel is part of the composition the piece takes place in 2015 i wanted to treat 2015 like it was a time capsule uh, I, I was treating it like we're making a period film. And I, when I am looking back, you know, this is, this is, a, this is Obama, Obama's, Obama's America, right? Um, my memory of that time is, it, it is maybe the, f- the first time I'm realizing how tethered we are to our phones and, and what our relationships are to our phones and, I wanted to use these sounds that had become almost Pavlovian as also part of the, a part of the, the, it is the world of the film, but it is also, I I feel like um, this is a slight segue, but in in one of our earlier screenings of the movie, uh, this, this is not in the film now, but there used to be, there was a digital gesture that was a, a volume button that came, it's, there's a volume button still in the movie, but there's a larger one that used to be in the middle of the frame. And it's kind of like the one that happens on your cell phone, on the older cell phone model. And at our first screening of it, when we used it, half of the audience went to their phones when it started to do that because they thought their phones were making the movie volume go down. And I was like, that's exactly (laughs) what I mean. Like there are these there are these images that have just been embedded, right? Like I hear a Twitter whistle. Well, first I now think about the movie, but before there are these sounds that are just like in our world that have just become a part of nature. And so there were certain um, like pieces that I wanted to feel like extensions of the character. Taylor's character has her own phone ring. Riley's character has her own phone ring. And those sounds are extensions of their personality. They're meant to like telegraph in some way who they are, right? Um, and and the lock screen, it was just like, these are sounds that we've accepted. We haven't really asked any questions about it. We've either accepted or they've taken a hold of us. And so I wanted to include them in this piece because I think that what Asia wrote was also a love letter to the internet. Um, no, I get it totally. When I watched the film, because I've seen it twice now, I kept thinking it does feel like a period film, almost like something from late 70s, early 80s. Thank you. And it has this... And it has this really grainy texture to it, which I think is super fascinating for a film made at the time that it was made. So great job to for you technically and for the acting and Am Taylor, like just amazing job all around. I really love the film, honestly. Thank you. So much for saying that. Tell all your friends, Carolyn. I will. <laughs>